everyone, a little bit of something different today, a kind of uh, a late summer special, if you like. I often get messages and emails from people saying, how do I go about videoing myself playing the piano? So that's what we're going to go through in this tutorial. I'm going to kind of take you through my workflow, give you a few hints and tips and show you how I do it and how I've done it in the past. It's really straightforward, or, or at least one of the ways I'm going to show you is, is really straightforward. You don't need to spend loads of, and, and loads of money. It doesn't need loads of fancy kit. Um, you can get started really easily. And it's a really handy thing to do, especially if you're a learner. Yeah, if you can video yourself, then you can, you know, you can create a video diary of your progress. You can stick videos of yourself on Facebook. You know, hey, look what I can do. Stuff that can really motivate you to get better. It's also handy if you're teaching yourself, if you don't have a, a piano teacher staring over your shoulder, you can kind of video yourself playing something and, and then kind of have a, a, a post-match analysis, if you like, you know, what did, what did I do wrong there? You could even put it on YouTube and say, hey Bill, or hey whoever else, what am I getting wrong here? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is show you these two methods of videoing yourself. One is really low tech and straightforward and the other is a little bit more complicated and just take you through the whole kind of whole kind of workflow of doing this thing. Okay, here we go. So the first thing I want to talk about is light. Here we are in my workroom. There's the piano in the corner. Next to it, you might just be able to see there is a window. Yeah, and it, and through that window is coming lots of good natural daylight. I'm keeping it out of shot because if I bring it in, it, you know, it tends to glare out the image. So, uh, but take my word for it, it's there. There's another window behind me. And I, I kind of chose this room actually to work in because of the good natural light. And if you can find a space like this for shooting, then that's ideal. Natural light offers you two advantages, yeah? The first one is that you don't have to worry too much about shadows. If you're shooting in the evening in the dark and you're having to put lights on and, and, and sort of shine lights on the piano, then you'll, you will spend ages chasing down shadows. You can see it in some of my earlier videos that I tried to shoot under artificial light and they just don't look right. Secondly, um, if you're using a camera phone or a GoPro or something like that, you will almost always find that it performs better under natural light. Okay, you will get a better, sharper image. So relatively minor things, but if you're after a, a kind of good quality, good quality image, you know, good quality results, then use natural light if you can. The other thing I'll just mention is that I have tried to kill um, a fair bit of the echo in the room if I can. The way I've done that is just by putting a load of my books in here. So there were some books on the left there and there were sort of bookshelves behind me and stuff as well. And they're soaking up some of the echo. And th that just kind of makes it a little bit easier to, to get a natural sound when I am talking on the mic. If you're recording straight into your laptop, straight, you know, taking your line out and not recording any live sound from your room, it's not such a big deal. But if you are, if you're recording from um, everything on your phone, if you're using the first setup that I'm going to talk about, if you're using a real piano, then having a relatively acoustically dead space is pretty handy. Okay, let's move in and look at some of the kit that I'm using here. Um, first of all, as I said, I'm gonna show you the most basic setup that, I, um, that I've that i used. And this is the setup and the gear that I used for shooting probably, I don't know, the first 60 or 70 tutorials that I did or, or something, you know, a crazy number I did just using this gear. And all you need to start off with is a mic stand, a boom mic stand. Uh, they're pretty cheap, kind of uh, 20 quid, $25, I guess, from a music store. Or you can get one secondhand from eBay uh, really cheaply. Um, just two things to check. First of all, make sure that you have a ring mounting on the end. That's really important. We'll, we'll see why short, uh, shortly. And also, if you're buying secondhand, try, if you can, to make sure that all the clamps are nice and secure, yeah? On old mic stands, you'll often find that the clamps have got threaded and everything gets a bit wobbly and insecure, which is not what you want, okay? So that's our first bit of kit. The only other three things we need for this basic setup are a sock, really important, we'll explain why shortly, an elastic band and something to shoot on, and a phone is absolutely ideal. Every single one of my piano tutorials that I've ever shot has been done on a phone. 
Okay, so let me get this basic rig set up and then I'll talk through how it works. And here we are with it all set up. Now, the beauty of this is that it is cheap and it is simple and you can put it together in just a minute or two. Let me show you what I've done here. So um, underneath here is the ring mount on the end of the, uh, the mic stand boom. It's in the horizontal position, okay, because that's what my phone is resting on. I've put the sock over the end of the boom because that provides extra grip for the phone, yeah? If you just try to attach the phone direct to the ring mount with the elastic band, you'll find it's kind of rocky and wobbly and, and not very secure. So the sock just gives you a bit of extra stability. I should say, be really, really careful with your phone, yeah? I, I kind of, I disclaim all responsibility if your phone drops off and you break it, yeah? Um, I've been kind of using a phone like this for seven years now and I've never dropped it once, but that's because I'm really, 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 really careful. So please do be careful with your phone because they are kind of expensive things to replace. Um, once you've got the basic position sorted, um, try and get things level if you can. And that means in, um, first of all, in that axis, it's not such a big deal if you're not quite absolutely level here. It's not quite as noticeable as if it's wonky in other axes. But do get this axis as level as you can, okay? Because if you get a slight tip either way, then it's, it's really notable. You get a very odd looking shot, okay? The other thing to do is to, to make sure that your phone is as square onto your keyboard as possible. Let me use this phone as an example, actually. Okay, so what I usually do is line up, you know, I, I pick a line on the, um, you know, uh, uh, on the control panel here, like that programs line, or I pick some of the knobs or whatever at the top and just make sure that everything is square. That's because if it's a little bit wonky, it's really annoying and it, it doesn't have to be far out for, for it to be really noticeable. So try to get it square onto the keyboard as possible. What I also do before I, I shoot anything is decide what range of notes I'm going to be using and make sure that my camera is at the right height to get them all in. And the way I do that is by putting a pen or a pencil on my lowest note and my highest note and trying to frame a tight shot around those. Okay, so that's it. Um, as I said, I, you know, I, I shot dozens of videos using this rig and it worked really well for me. The big downside is that you're using the phone to do everything. It's picking up the sound of the piano. Um, if you're talking, you're singing, it's picking up the sound of your voice. And that means because it's a microphone, uh, a, a phone mic, it, it's kind of a general mic, you will pick up extraneous noise. And the, the big extraneous noise you pick up will be keyboard noise. Okay, keyboard noise was the bane of my life when I was doing this. You should be able to live with it if you're just doing it for fun, but um, you, you know it will be noticeable. You can offset it by um, lining your sound out into uh, a laptop using um, you know a, a music application with a piano sound, and I'll talk about that shortly. Um, but if you are shooting live, if you're shooting on a real piano, for example, you are going to have to live with that keyboard noise to a certain extent. It'll vary by piano and by, by keyboard, but you know it, it may well be a little bit noticeable. Okay, so that really is the only downside of this, the, the kind of sound quality. Otherwise, it's a, a beautiful little system, and you know if you're just shooting stuff for your own fun, for your own satisfaction, to keep track of your progress or whatever, it should suit you just fine. And here we are with the kit that I use at the moment for shooting uh, tutorials. This is a pretty good rig. It, it gets a pretty good quality result and um, it, it's not cost a fortune. I've kind of built it up over the years. So let me uh, l let me talk you through some of the stuff that I've got going on here. Um, I'm still using a phone for doing all my shooting. Yeah, but as you can see, it is no longer attached with a sock and an elastic band. Rather, it's attached to the mic, which I'll talk about in a sec, using this rather good piece of kit, which is all from Joby Products, J-O-B-Y, I really recommend them. Um, that is a Joby Action Clamp. And uh, jo Joby Gear is modular. You can screw diff different bits of, m of Joby kit together. That's uh, a Joby Gorilla Pod arm, and that's a, um, a Joby Grip Tight holding my phone. Yeah, and that gives me loads of flexibility. Not super cheap. I, I think maybe in total that cost me 20, 25 pounds or something. I can't remember the exact pricing, but uh, very good, very reliable, very sturdy. That allows me to attach to my mic, which is an M Audio Nova 
cardioid mic, really great for picking up my voice. Um, obviously, if you're just shooting yourself playing the piano rather than talking or singing, you don't need a mic, okay? But if you are gonna be making some sort of other sound, as it were, then this is a good option. People sometimes say to me, you know, hey Bill, why don't you use a headset mic? Because that would solve all your problems with keyboard noise and blah, 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 and all the rest of it. And I've kind of tried it, but I don't like it. <laughs> Here's the short answer. It produce, um, headset mics produce a much more, um, a much less natural sound, actually, yeah? With this setup, it, it, it's actually like someone sat in a room playing the piano rather than someone breathing down your neck, as it were. So I kind of like it. Um, it is attached to the good old fashioned mic stand and uh, for, for a grand piece of low technology we have on the far end of the mic stand a plastic carrier bag full of books as a counterweight yeah because this is pretty heavy and if it wasn't a counterweight it would be putting a lot of stress on this joint okay so the um, sound from that mic comes down this cable and into this thing which is an Akai EIE um, audio interface, uh, really nice piece of kit. I haven't had it that long. Uh, I paid about £150 for it, so like $200 probably. Um, and it is cool because it has four input channels, so I can record voice and two channels for the piano, so the piano is in stereo. That allows me to actually record the native onboard sound of my Nord, which is a lovely Bosendorfer Grand sound. Um, I never used to do that, I used to do something different, I'll talk about that shortly, uh, but that's really cool. Um, before the EIE, um, I just used one of these, a uh, Roland Eddyroll uh, USB audio capture, uh, audio interface, really cool piece of kit, but only had one input, so it was kind of cool for using a mic, um, <clears throat> but but that was ab about it, but much, much cheaper, I think they're like, you know, 30 or 40 pounds or something uh, yeah um, but yeah really cool piece of kit if you need uh, an audio interface to, to translate the uh, the sound of your voice or the, the signal from your piano into something uh, that can uh, your laptop can use speaking of laptops all that's going around the back of the piano through a USB cable into my Mac here we go um, and pair of headphones which I wear when recording so that I can monitor the, the, the sound and what we're going to look at now is the software that I'm using on my Mac and how I am capturing that sound and then how I'm editing it all together. Okay so here I am on my Mac and this is where I handle all the sound production. It's worth saying that if you use the first of the two methods that I showed you, the really simple one, just work, just using your phone, you don't need to go through this stage at all because your, your phone will be automatically layering the audio against your video. But because I, I capture audio and video separately, so I have more control over both, um, you know, using the second of my two methods, th this is where I do the editing and control. So it's very straightforward. Um, if you are familiar with Mac software, you'll see that I'm using GarageBand or, or GarageBand if you're in the States. Um, people sometimes say to me, you know, why don't you use Logic Pro, R really great high-end uh, audio app. And um, I, I actually have Logic Pro and I use it for some stuff, but I don't use it for this uh, because what, what I'm doing here is so simple. It, it, you know, I can get by with a really lightweight but powerful app like uh, GarageBand, which loads up really quickly and, you know, is it does everything I need it to do for this job. So let me just talk you through what I've got here. Um, up here, I have the piano that's coming in um, on tracks one and two of my audio interface, the EIE interface, as you can see here. And here I've got my um, uh, voice, okay, which is coming in, as you can see, on track three of the audio interface, yeah? Um, and it's pretty simple. What I can do is uh, get those together. That They should be lined up perfectly because I've recorded them together. If you cut, you know, if you top and tail either end, you know, um, if, if you chop a bit off and, and delete it and chop a similar bit off and delete it in, whoops, in uh, in the top track, it's important to, to make sure the two tracks stay aligned. Um, but apart from that, nothing complicated there. Just to talk very briefly about the levels. I just have the piano usually quite quiet on about minus 7.2 decibels and the voice 
quite loud on, on, on about zero decibels or higher. I'm also controlling those uh, volumes through the audio interface. But um, if you're doing this for the first time, do kind of make a test video, you know, especially if you're doing voice and piano and, and kind of experiment with getting the balance right between the two. Just down here, I've got this unused track, um, the, the, the New York Concert, Concert Grand uh, track, which is um, uh, his instrument. Th this is how I used to do things. These days, as I said, I get the onboard sound that my Nord piano makes into here through my audio interface. But what I used to do was have the sound generated actually in GarageBand itself. Uh, garage band I'll decide on pronunciation one day through this um, uh, this um, New York concert grand instrument plugin which is a really cool piano sound if, if you listen to quite a few of my um, videos from two or three years ago you'll hear me using uh, this particular sound so you know you can d d you know do it that way using a virtual instrument if you want to but right now I don't okay I just use the natural sound of my Nord so that's it that that's kind of it so what I do from here is just go to share and export song to disk and I export the file to my desktop and then it's all ready to go into my movie editing application okay and finally here we are editing everything together um, as you can see I'm using iMovie the uh, the kind of low-end Apple app for movie editing um, not particularly powerful as apps go but it's dead cheap and it does everything I need it to do um, I've got my timeline down here so all my little bits of video I, I've got here the uh, start and end segments from this very uh, video that I'm shooting now um, the introduction and the conclusion which you haven't seen yet uh, it's, it's at the end here um, and I, I've shot them as one take and I'll cut them into in the middle now what I've done here, oh, something I should just draw your attention to in iMovie really move, uh, really useful is the uh, expand and collapse tool there, which makes your uh, timeline longer and more, you know, more kind of granular or, or shorter and more compact. Really useful tool. As you can see, what I've done here, I, this is my movie file at the top. I've dragged and dropped that in. And underneath, I've dragged and dropped in the sound file that I generated from um, GarageBand uh, a minute or two ago. Now the tricky thing to do here is to line up the um, <clears throat> the audio with the video so that the two are in perfect sync. And that's not quite quite as straightforward as it might seem. So what I'm going to do now is just focus in on this little bit of the timeline and show you how I do that. Okay, so here we are focused down on the timeline. And as you can see, I've got my video file here exported from my phone and my audio file here. Yeah. Um, there are basically two ways of syncing the two together. And as, as I said, you know, if you've shot everything on your phone using the audio from your phone, doesn't really matter. But if you are exporting your audio, you do need to sync the two files together. Two ways of doing it. Um, firstly, you can just try to do it visually. So you can kind of find a bit where you are you know playing the keys and try and match that against the audio that involves a bit of guesswork but but it but it can work pretty well that's how I used to do it um what I do these days is actually sync the peaks and troughs uh, along here because as you can see what I've got here is the the kind of peaks and troughs I move is showing me the peaks and troughs in the soundtrack file that I'm using but while I was shooting the video um my phone was also picking up its own sound yeah, so what I can do, although this sound is going to be ditched, it's going to be muted, what I can do is match up the peaks and troughs against the two to get the, the sync working. So I've done that roughly, and let's just see uh, approximately, let me turn my volume down a bit, let's just see approximately how that is come out, coming out. Not bad. Hey everyone. A little bit of a, a different okay. tutorial. Okay, you today. can something of a, you can hear kind of that there special. is if you, you can hear there is a little bit of an echo there, just the tiniest, tiniest bit of echo. So to try to correct that, I, I mean, if it was that small, I probably wouldn't bother. But what I will do is just expand and just look at the waveform, and you can see that how that's happened because the start of that peak there is just a little bit behind there when we expand it. There we go. So let's try again. 
hey everyone and there it's gone okay so what I would do then is just kill the sound from the um, from the phone because I don't need that and job done one thing that I might have to do is um, just go to the end of the clip okay we'll just squeeze along to there um, to deal with a problem that often crops up depending on your hardware and software that you're using um, sometimes the two get out of sync towards the end make up the slight, slight deficit I had earlier in the year so, so okay can you hear how, hear how the two, two tracks have got out of sync there um, <clears throat> what's happened is that the um, uh, my audio interface is slightly more efficient, a slightly faster bit rate when it comes to gathering data, so it creates a slightly shorter soundtrack file um, than than the, um, the the audio from the phone. And over time, those kind of micro millisecond differences mount up until they're out of sync. There's a dead easy way to uh, to fix that. What you do um, at the moment, oh, I'll just hide it again and show you what you do in iMovie at least is right click on that track and click show speed editor yeah and then if we stretch things out again we can drag the speed editor so that it is much more in the right so place watch this space. and then there could be another one coming Th th that is sorted often and really long ones you you'll find it's like back there and really yeah, watch this space there could yeah. be another so one coming I'm, I'm really badly out okay but you know you can soon fix it just by getting to the speed editor and just dragging those peaks back so that they match and then kill the sound on there and that's kind of it as I say it kind of depends on the hardware and the software that you're using whether you have to deal with that effect it, it took a little bit of working out the first time I had to deal with it but it, it's not a major problem Right, so I hope that was useful. Um, I look forward to seeing some of the results of this. You know, if you do manage to uh, video yourself, stick it on on YouTube or email it to me or whatever. I'd be absolutely delighted to see what results you've had. As usual, quick plugs. First of all, for my book, How to Really Play the Piano, the stuff your teacher never taught you. If you're just starting out in improvisation and things like that, this book will really help you. Okay, loads of stuff on chords and, and that kind of thing. There's my cocktail piano ebook, um, which is quite handy um, for if you're interested in cocktail piano kind of styles. And my new book, Seven Studies in Pop Piano, is coming out very soon, hopefully in about five weeks' time. All, all the beta testing is nearly done. That's it. Also, my Patreon crowdfunding campaign, if you can spare a dollar or two dollars per tutorial, that would be awesome. Really help me spend more time making these things. Patreon.com slash Bill Hilton. Uh, head over there and, uh, and, and have a look at that. Okay, so that is it. Um, I'm going to try and crank out another tutorial for August to make up, this, make up for the slight deficit I had earlier in the year. So watch this space. There could be another one coming very soon. See you soon.